Hey kids, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 2, Row Major Traversals, Exercise Number 3. We have a choose your own adventure. This time, you know how I love dogs. Shout out to my little Ollie right there. We're going to go ahead and do B dog breeds. The solutions to all of these are pretty similar. Let's go ahead and jump in and see what we have to do. A family is trying to decide on which dog breed to adopt. They want to choose a dog breed that is less than or equal to 20 inches tall. They have the following values. Then we have a set of values here where each row represents a Beagle, Dalmatian, Golden Retriever, and Pug. Each column represents the minimum and maximum height of each breed. In dog data, we're going to write the method find height to find the dog breed with the minimum or maximum height that is less than or equal to 20. So we're going to print each value found that meets that criteria. If the value is less than or equal to the max height and the column is zero, we want to print the corresponding name of the breed from the breeds based on the row that the value is found. The value found and that is the minimum height. If the value is less than or equal to the max height and the column is one, print the corresponding name of the breed from the breeds based on the row that that value is found, the value found, and that it is the maximum height. Then we have some hints if we get lost. This right here is a pretty big hint on what we need to do, but let's jump into our code first. We have our breeds. Beagle, Dalmatian, Golden Retriever, Pug, and then the minimum and maximum height for each of them. We're instantiating a new object, my dogs. It's from the dog data class. It is taking two parameters, breeds, and then heights are 2D array. And then we are passing along 20 to the find heights method. In dog data, we have our two arrays getting passed along, breeds and our 2D array data. We have our constructor taking those two arrays and then a space for our find height method. So on this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our nested for loops to look through our rows and columns. And then every time we go through, we're going to write two if statements to check if we're either at a zero or a one. Let's start off with our four statements. I'm going to do four parentheses, some curly cues. This is my out for four. And in here, we're going to go through our row. So in row equal zero, as long as our row is less than What's our array we're looking through? It's the data array. So as long as it's less than the data length, we're gonna keep going through the array. Now we have to go through our inner array. Curly cues. This is our inner four. And this is our column. So in column equals zero. As long as our column is less than the data, but we don't want to go through the array, we want to traverse through one of the rows, which are the column elements. As long as it's through the length of that, we're going to go through the column. Let's spell our length right here. As we go through, now we want to check. So we need an if statement. Put our curly cues. And what we want to do is we want to check if the value is less than or equal to the max height. What data are we checking? Well, we're checking our data at each row and column to see if it is less than or equal to our max height that we're passing along. But that's only one part of it. We also want to see if the column is zero. 
So that's an and statement. And we're going to check and see if the column equal equal zero. If it does, we're going to do a print statement. And what do we want to print off? We want to print off the breed based on the row, the value found, and that it is the minimum height. That means we need breeds and we're at the row. So we need to get whatever row we're at. We'll concatenate, do a little colon there like that. Then we need to get the data we're at. So that's going to be two more sets of square brackets, and that's row and column. And then we want to concatenate again, and we want to call for the minimum height. And then we need one more parenthesis and our semicolon. Let's spell minimum right though. That is just one if statement. We need to check for the one as well. So that means we need another if. If, do our curly cues. And in here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna see if the data, if the row and column, if that now is greater than or equal to max height and the column now equal equal one, we're gonna do the same thing from above. And that's gonna be another print statement. And we're gonna say the breeds from the row, we'll do the same thing as above. It'll help us check our spelling too. Then we're going to do the data to braces, row, column, and then plus, do that, some parentheses, and this says maximum height. And then we have our curly Q, looks pretty good. Clean this up, then we'll check our spelling real quick. Should end up with, that's our end of method and end of class. Curly cues will look pretty good. Let's check our spelling here. Max height looks pretty good. Breeds, data looks pretty good. Maximum, minimum. Well, maximum is not spelled right. Let's spell that right. When I hit run, if the number is under the minimum of our max height, which is 20, and we are in column zero, that is our minimum height numbers in our array, we should get a list of those dogs to print off. We should also get another print statement with all the dogs in column one that is less than our max height, which is 20, which is our maximum height for our dog. Let's see if we have any spelling errors. Over here, looks like our parentheses got mixed up over there. That looks pretty good. Do we have anything else? Clear that, let's hit run. And we get our maximum minimums within our range. And our 22 does not pop up. So in our information, our Beagle was under 20 in our minimum and maximum. Our Dalmatian was only under the minimum. 23 was the maximum, so it doesn't fit. Nothing for our Golden Retriever. They're all greater than the numbers we have. And then our Pug, we get our minimum. 
and a maximum. So our code works pretty good. Key takeaway from this lesson is further reinforcing this row major traversal. This is just like traversing a 1D array, except now we can function in two dimensions. And this is very helpful for a lot of reasons. In the last lesson, we added up inventory. This one, we check values to make sure that they fit the ranges we want. And again, the final FRQ you're going to have to write is a two-dimensional array. One is going to be on method and control structures. Two is on classes. Three is on 1D array. And our fourth is on 2D array. So these concepts are very crucial in being successful on the AP CSA exam, especially the FRQ questions. Hopefully this video helped you understand row major traversal a little better. As always, if you have any questions, come see me, kids. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.